Hi guys, welcome to a new video. Right, they finally did it. NASA just launched their new long-awaited Mars Expedition Vehicle, the Perseverance Rover. In this video, we will explain what is the Perseverance Rover, how it was launched, the goal of this Mars operation, and so much more. Please watch this video till the end, so you really don't miss out on anything. And don't forget to subscribe. First, let's start off with a little bit of history of the rovers NASA sent on Mars. Since the 1990s, NASA launched four rovers on the surface of Mars. The first one was called the Mars Pathfinder, also known as Sojourner. This was launched in the 1996. Later in 2003, one of the most important rovers were launched, the Opportunity rover. Opportunity was a big breakthrough. It discovered that Mars had oceans of water that could have possibly supported microbial life. All that water on Mars is only in form of ice now. And then in November 2011, NASA launched the Curiosity rover. Curiosity is a car-sized vehicle which was designed to explore the Gale Crater on Mars as a part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory mission. The motive of these rovers was to capture and get more information on the planet's surface and many other things. Finally, let's talk about the fourth and the most recent launch. On July 30, 2020, NASA launched the new Perseverance rover from the Cape Carnaval Air Force Station in Florida. The target landing site of the Perseverance rover is the Jezero Crater, a crater on Mars thought to once have been flooded with water. The diameter of this crater is about 49 kilometers across. There is some complexity to the launch of this specific flight, so let's get into that. Mars and Earth orbit the Sun at different distances and speeds, so they are not always aligned. At the furthest point of their orbits, Mars and Earth are 401 million kilometers away from each other. If you try to go to Mars, then you're gonna be spending a long time traveling through space. But here is an interesting fact. At Mars and Earth's closest orbit, the two planets can be less than 60 million kilometers apart. Every two years, Mars and Earth's orbit get really close together and shortens the distance between both planets significantly. The current launch window was between mid-July and mid-August when both planets are as close as they get. Waiting for the planetary alignment gives you a huge advantage in terms of distance and allows you to send the biggest spacecraft. This launch window lasts only for about a month and only comes every two years or so. If NASA hadn't launched the Perseverance by August 15th, it would have to wait until 2022 to try again. Do you think the spacecraft directly goes to Mars, just like flying to another country? When you send a spacecraft from Earth, it doesn't just go straight to Mars. After launching the rocket, before going to Mars, you need to first put it in the parking orbit. This is similar to a satellite orbiting Earth, and at just the right moment, the rocket fires its engines so that it gets on path to Mars. And that path is known as the Hohmann Transfer Orbit. The gravitational pull of both planets sort of glides the rocket to Mars. The spacecraft will then reach Mars in about 7 months down the line. Perseverance rover is a vehicle made to explore Mars with a bunch of scientific instruments to do research for a lot of things. I will explain that in just a little bit. The Mars Perseverance rover mission is a part of NASA's Mars Exploration Program, a long-term effort of robotic exploration of the Red Planet. The Perseverance rover has four science objectives that we'll be explaining each one in depth. Looking for habitability, seeking biosignatures, collecting samples from Mars, preparing humans to visit Mars. Right now, scientists see Mars as the key to answering one of the biggest questions. Are we alone? The major goal of this Perseverance mission is to investigate astrobiology on Mars, in particular to address the question whether life exists on Mars. Starting with the design, the Perseverance rover at first glance looks pretty similar to the Curiosity rover, but it has a whole new set of science instruments. Those science instruments were purposefully selected to help us search for biosignatures of life. Perseverance will also have microphones attached across the whole rover, which means it will give us a real feel and human sense to help us know more about our neighboring planet. One of the new features of the Perseverance rover is that it's able to self-drive up to 200 meters without human commands. As the rover is driving, it can create a map of the surface it's moving on. 
Alongside the Perseverance rover, it carries a small drone-like helicopter hitching a ride on its belly, called Ingenuity. Ingenuity features four special carbon fiber blades arranged into two rotors that spin in opposite directions at around 2400 rpm, many times faster than a passenger helicopter on Earth. It also has innovative solar cells, batteries and other components. Ingenuity doesn't carry science instruments and it's a separate experiment from the Perseverance rover. Basically, these components of Ingenuity will provide us with top shots of the Martian surface. If successful, these technologies could enable other advanced robotic flying vehicles that may be included in future robotic and human missions to Mars. To unlock secrets of Mars, scientists have to bring samples from Mars back to Earth. So what this Mars 2020 mission is going to do is to drill rocks on Mars, get samples, put them in small tubes, and seal each sample in an individual tube. Perseverance will also use gases on Mars to make oxygen and fuel to send samples it takes from Mars back to Earth. Perseverance also carries MOXIE, Mars Oxygen ISRU experiment, which will attempt to produce small amount of oxygen using the existing atmosphere on Mars. The atmosphere of Mars is a layer of gases surrounding the planet. It's primarily comprised of carbon dioxide, molecular nitrogen, and argon. Perseverance is a profound first step in both understanding of our place in the universe and a stepping stone towards human exploration on Mars. Alright guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Wait, wait, wait. There is another thing I really need to talk about. Do you remember that video I made when the Crew Dragon was launched? If you haven't watched that video, the link will be in the description below. These two astronauts stayed in space for two months. Now finally, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley finally returned home and splashed down on Sunday in the Gulf of Mexico in the Crew Dragon capsule. Watch this little video from NASA to get what they really did. As I look back on the, the mission that we've had here on the International Space Station, I'm proud to have been a part of much of the science activities that happened over the last two months. Views always amazing though. I didn't think I would do another spacewalk and uh, to now have the chance to have done uh, four more was just uh, icing on the cake for a, a, a wonderful mission. Does the tenth one feel like the first one? No. A little more comfortable on the tenth one. It's hard to put into words uh, just what it was like to be a part of this expedition, Expedition 63. It'll be uh, kind of a memory that will last a lifetime for me. It's been a true honor. Dragon SpaceX, undock sequence commanded. Thrusters looking good. The, the hardest part was getting us launched, but the most important part is, is bringing us home. I'm in time, Daddy. We love you. Hurry home so we can go get my dog. Flash down. Welcome back to planet Earth, and thanks for flying SpaceX. It's truly our honor and privilege. Space dads are back on Earth after a 19-hour return journey from space. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Talk to you guys in the next one. Stay safe. Stupid